Hello, everybody. It's great to be with you all at this time. I know I'm sharing with people, young people right across the Pacific, Papua New Guinea, Australia, New Zealand. I don't know whether you're on a bus watching this later in the year or whether you're right now with your youth group in a room together or whether you're watching this from home. But wherever you are, I just pray that God will be with you, with us as we move forward through these programs. Nick has asked me to share four different messages and it's all about grateful living. My name is Julian Archer. I'm a retired businessman, but now I am the stewardship director for the South Pacific Division, and I love to live gratefully and to encourage others to be thankful for all that God has given us. So let's just uh, jump in here now. I'll uh, share the screen, and we will be ready to go. Okay, there we are. Grateful living. When we were looking at what it means to be a faithful steward or a faithful manager of everything that God gives us, we realized, yes, that we need to be faithful with our time, our talents, our treasures. And these are all things that God gives us. But then as we started to study the Bible more, we realized that it was actually more than just those three. There were a whole lot of different things that God has blessed us with that he wants us to manage faithfully. And you can see them here. There's time, talents, and treasure. But what about our temple? What about my body temple? God has given each of us a body and he's asked us to manage it faithfully, to be good stewards of our bodies. And what about our testimony? God's done great things in all of our lives. Are we being faithful managing that testimony? Are we using our testimony for God's glory? And our tribe, our family, church family, global family, are we faithfully caring for our tribe? And what about our territory, the, the environment that God has blessed us with, are we caring for the environment or are we just using it and, and abusing it? And of course, God's truth as well. Am I being a faithful manager of the truth that God has given me? So there are the eight T's of grateful living. Let's just have a look at it in, in a video form. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful way to live, thankfully and gratefully, always. The Bible is full of stories of people who lived gratefully, and it's not just the superheroes. Even when Jonah was running from God and was caught in the belly of a fish, he prayed, I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. And the outcast Samaritan leper, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Sure, God may not have saved us from a terrible disease or from rotting inside a fish, but we know that in God, we live and move and have our being. We can be grateful to God for every breath and every heartbeat. Grateful living is about whole of life giving. And there are many benefits. Ellen White wrote that nothing tends more to promote health of body and of soul than does a spirit of gratitude and praise. And if there is anyone who should be continually grateful, it is the Christian. We've been saved, so let's notify our faces. Let's live gratefully as we experience the joy of whole of life giving. God invites us to be faithful managers of everything He gives us. An easy way to remember His gifts is by the eight T's of grateful living. Let's accept God's invitation to prayerfully manage and be grateful for our time, talents, testimony, treasure, temple, territory, tribe, and His truth. That's whole of life, grateful living. Welcome to a whole new level of Christ-centered, abundant living. Yes, yeah, so there it is. Smiles are infectious, aren't they? When you see people smiling, even, even on a video, I find myself smiling. And uh, that's all part of being grateful. Being grateful even for the smiles that we see around us during the day. 
So there's eight T's to, to grateful living. Time, talents, testimony, treasure, temple, territory, tribe, and truth. And we have actually prepared an eight-part sermon series that you can run in your church. And I'm going to give you more details of what we've provided. And it's something that you can just stand and deliver. The PowerPoint's already done. The scripts are already there. So you can just stand up and, and read it out as, as a sermon. Or what we would really like you to do is modify it to suit your culture, your congregation, your own stories, your illustrations, and just use the base PowerPoint that we have there. There's Bible quotes and spirit of prophecy quotes that you can use and other quotes as well. Um, but we want you to tailor it for your own audience. But let's 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 put that aside for a moment. Hey, I've got a couple of young ladies who actually stayed with me a little while ago, and they said, oh, we... We want to, uh, we've been staying here with your family in your house. What can we give you? And I said, nothing, nothing at all. And they said, can we, can we give you a jingle for grateful living? And I'm like, a jingle? And they said, yeah, yeah, just a really short little song that talks about grateful living. And I said, absolutely. And so here it is. I'm going to play it for you. Time, talent's testimony, treasure, temple, territory, with my tribe. In truth we abide Time, talents, testimony Treasure, temple, territory With my tribe In truth we abide Gratefulness It's how we want to live Gratefulness So abundant and free so abundant and free. Now ah, it's beautiful, isn't it? And that's actually built into the PowerPoint. That so whenever you're sharing on one of these eight T's at your local church or the pastor sharing or elders or whoever's doing it, they can play that song. And it's a really catchy little tune. And I've listened to it a lot and it's in my head and it reminds me about those eight T's of grateful living. So here's a, here's a sample of, uh, of what we've provided. So there's eight different sermons with PowerPoints. This one is the heading slide for time. And of course, we understand from a stewardship point of view that grateful living leads to cheerful giving. Because when I'm grateful for the time that God has given me, I want to give that time for his glory. When he's given me money, I want to give that money into his work. When he's given me talents or anything else, I want to use it all and give it for him. So there's talents, testimony, treasure, temple, territory, tribe, a whole lot of different ones. And it's also done, uh, we have some with illustrations from the Pacific and Papua New Guinea. We have others from Australia and New Zealand. You can download it all online. And of course, God's truth. Are we being faithful stewards of God's truth? So if you can grab that QR code, I don't know whether my little the picture of me in the corner of the screen is covering the QR code, but you can see it down in the bottom left corner as well. So it's a, it's a series on grateful living for every church, every age. And I'm going to share more with you about that. And it's ready to modify or just stand and deliver. Sermons, PowerPoints, children's activity sheets, videos, songs and lyrics, music scores even, promotional kit and different versions of it. Let's jump in and have a look. There's social media tiles. So you can promote your grateful living series on social media. There's uh, bigger banners and advertisements and different things as well. There you can see banners for across the top of a web page, for example, or a, uh, maybe a church bulletin. There's posters for your church notice boards, so you can download them and add your church's information or the times that the program is running on the posters. Uh, there's even a branding guideline. So if, you're, if you've got a graphic designer in your church who wants to do up some stuff just that's really tailored to your local church, there's all sorts of logos and branding and different things that you can use and some guidelines for that as well. And grateful living for kids. I'm really excited about this because this is a, when you're running this series in your church, it's not just for the adults, but it's for the kids as well. And uh, you can see that the, the, the kids have their own series of, of the different um, grateful living topics. And they also have their songs, their, there's videos, their, there's lyric sheets that can be printed out so the children can learn the songs. Um, as I mentioned before, there's music scores. So if you're if you've got a piano or guitars or whatever in your your church, then people can actually learn the music to play along with the kids' songs. There's also worksheets, activity sheets for juniors and and primary age students, 
And these are excellent so that when the pastor is up the front, for example, this one, steward of my territory, the pastor might be preaching on being a faithful steward of territory and the children can be sitting there studying and learning while they're also listening about territory, doing their own activities on the exact same topic. So it's, just, it's fantastic, the whole, whole kit that has been put together here. And you can see these, these videos uh, beautifully done by Abide uh, Family Ministries in Kurumbong in Australia, videos about the territory. What about being a steward of my talents? And they're singing songs where the kids are singing and there's words across the bottom of the screen. Steward of my time. Steward of my things. But why do we do all this? Why do we want to focus on grateful living? Why are we making this a special focus across the South Pacific? And by the way, this has gone around the world as well. They, they've, I just received word recently that it's being translated into all of the languages of the trans-European division as well across parts of Europe. Uh, so it's an exciting resource that's going out. But why? Why do we want to encourage grateful living? Well, there's a lot of science behind it. Listen to this. Did you know that scientific studies show that grateful people sleep better, live healthier, have better friendships and marriages, have less depression and anxiety, cope better with stress, tend to exercise more, enjoy life more, and live longer. <laughs> like, man, if there's just one thing that we should be changing in our lives, maybe we should just be more grateful. Because I tell you what, there's no pill, there's no medicine that you can take that will give you all of those things. But just being grateful, thanking God every day for his blessings. Remember the old songs, count your blessings, name them one by one. There's actually a lot of science behind that. It's not just a biblical thing where God tells us to do that. He tells us to do that because he knows that that's how he created us to be. That's how we are wired. That's what we run on. We can live gratefully and it helps us with all of those things. So let's give thanks in all circumstances, as the Bible tells us. How about this? This is from Dr. Darren Morton's book called Live More Happy. Great little book. If you can get a copy of it, go for it. You may even be able to get it online um, by Dr. Darren Morton at Avondale University. He says that feelings follow our focus. Researchers from the University of California and Miami conducted several gratitude experiments and concluded that consciously focusing on blessings as compared to burdens or problems had both emotional and interpersonal benefits. Interesting. Other researchers reported that when people participated in a gratitude visit, which involves writing and delivering a letter of gratitude or thanks to someone who had been especially significant to them, the giver's level of happiness increased. Not only that, listen to this, it increased and remained elevated for one month afterward. <laughs> this is amazing. These are scientific studies. And this one shows that when you do a gratitude visit, when you deliver a letter of thanks to someone who's been especially kind to you in some way, you will be happier for the next month. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy, the science that is coming out. This is also from page 92 of Darren's book, Practicing Gratitude. Many scientific studies have now proven that practicing gratitude helps people of all ages to feel more emotionally well, including children, early adolescents, college students, and middle-aged and older adults. Practicing gratitude is one of the best strategies for increasing happiness. It's incredible. Scientific studies are now showing what the Bible has given us for thousands of years. How good is our God? Let's keep looking. Three good things. In a fascinating study, participants were asked to complete a short writing activity called Three Good Things before they went to sleep every night for one week. The task involved writing down three things that went well that day and why they went well. That's simple, isn't it? Just before you go to bed, you have a notepad beside your bed and you write down three things that went well that day and then you go to sleep. Well, the participants benefited so much from the activity that many of them stuck with it. But what was truly remarkable is that their happiness progressively increased for the next six months. Wow. These are long-term benefits. God knows that gratefulness is great for us. Hey, I hadn't thought of that. That's a, that's a good line. <laughs> gratefulness is great for us. 
you need to put that in your sermons when you're sharing it. Gratefulness is great for us. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let's keep going. Listen to this. This is, this is one of the most crazy pieces of scientific research that I've seen in a long time. This is by Chris Woolston, who's a health and medical writer. He says, here's another dramatic example of the power of perceptions, how we see things. In a study of more than 5,000 people over the age of 65, researchers at Johns Hopkins University found that a poor image of one's health, regardless of other risk factors. So if, if you think, oh, I'm sick, oh, I'm tired, oh, I'm, I'm not very healthy, I'm not very good. The image that you have of your own health, regardless of other risk factors, roughly doubled the risk of death within five years. In fact, a pessimistic outlook proved to be deadlier than congestive heart failure or smoking 50 or more packs of cigarettes every year. <laughs> what? You see what that says here? If, if you have a pessimistic outlook on life and, and on your health, so you're going, oh, life's no good, um, my, my health's no good, I, I can't be good, I can't be healthy. If, you, if that's your attitude, then that is actually worse for your health than smoking a packet of cigarettes every week for a year. That is amazing. Again, it shows us the urgency, the importance of us promoting grateful living in our own life, in our families, our church families, and our whole community. We've got to live more gratefully because it has so many benefits to us. From Forbes magazine in 2021, practicing gratitude allows our brains to release serotonin and dopamine, two feel-good chemicals that positively impact mood, willpower, and motivation. Man, we all need that, don't we? Ways to improve our mood, our willpower, and our motivation. Regularly engaging in a gratitude practice strengthens these neural pathways. Over time, practicing gratitude will train your brain to focus on what's going well versus what isn't. And that leads to all sorts of positive outcomes, mental and physical. Wow, the science is solid. We need to be more grateful. So how do we do that? Let's look at these seven steps. Start a gratitude journal. So like we were talking about before, those three good things, write down, what are the good things? What are you grateful for? What are you thankful for? Or as the old song says, count your blessings, name them one by one. Say thank you, even if it's hard to do. Saying thankful, thank you is a sign of gratefulness to people. Number three, live with an expectation of God's blessings. This is this, this is this optimistic view of life where we go, you know what? God has blessed in the past and he is going to bless in the future. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because remember, joy is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when we have the Holy Spirit, we have joy. I sometimes think to myself, Julian, if you know you're saved, notify your face. I'm saved. <laughs> it's good news. Christians should be the happiest and most grateful people on the planet because we know that we are saved, that we have the assurance of eternal life because of what Jesus has done for us. Let's notify our faces. It's contagious. Number five, share your material blessings with others. Give and it will be given unto you. That's the, the Bible teaching. So let's, when God gives us those blessings, let's share them with the people around us. Take walks in nature. I like this little saying, blue and green should often be seen. That means get outside, look at the sky, look at the trees, look at the ocean, look at things that are blue and green. They should often be seen. Keeps us healthy. And number seven, do the eight-week Grateful Living series in your church. That's one way of helping everybody to be more grateful helping everybody then to be more healthy mentally and physically, spiritually and relationally, because they are more grateful in their lives. So that's just an introduction to the Grateful Living series, why we do, we do it, why we're promoting it, and the benefits that you and your community can receive. So now, as we finish this session, I just want to put these two questions up there on the screen for you to do in your small groups. Number one, what can I do to live more gratefully? So what can I do to live more gratefully for myself and then for others? But what can I do to live more gratefully? And number two, 
who should I talk to about running a grateful living series in my church? I want to leave you with those two questions and I'll be back with another session later on in Youth Congress. Thank you all.